If you've got a 2012 and up Fiat 500 and you've got an issue with your clutch switch, you're looking to replace it, you can actually repair it. Take a look at this video. This will show you how to pull it out without disassembling anything but the lower airbag. Here's a quick picture of the switch. It's very difficult to get a good video up under the dash, but I guarantee you, watch this if you're having troubles. I'll show you how to remove the switch, take the switch apart, clean it up, and get it working again. Then it's a very simple matter to put it back in and get your car going. But most guys tell you you've got to pull the pedal off or the dash. It's a lot more work to do it their way. This is a little cramped, but I guarantee you, watch this video and you'll be able to get it done in no time. I don't think I'm getting a video of me actually doing it. Well, we're gonna see how much I can actually get on video here. Obviously, when I try with the camera off, I get the damn thing out. You wouldn't have been able to see anything anyways. But from the way this pin here, the black pin was sitting in there, I think somebody had this apart before and put it in backwards because it was over on this side. I'm almost positive. I'm gonna go back through the other videos and see, but now I can test the switch. I've got the... Where did it go? My wire's hiding back there somewhere. If you can, if you can see it there, I don't think you can. Whatever. My tab was over on this side. Let's flash up that picture that I took. You can see the plug, but you can see the tab over here. So I don't think it was holding anything in right. I think there was some movement. I'm gonna pull this cover off. You'll pull the cover off and you see that little tab there. And those ones there, so it won't pop apart on you right away. But I'm going to pull it apart, see if there's some dirty contacts that I can clean up, sometimes bend it back into place. And, uh, yeah, see, you've got the one oblong head tab there, and the one round one. So you'll locate it with this one and then pop this one in. And then this guy will go in here. And that tab clips into there. There you go. So I'll be back once I pull that cover off. I'm going to go get my tripod. I haven't done a video in a, while, in a while, so my garage is a mess. But this is the part. That you may be having problems with. I wanted to point this out. I've got really bad light in here. My apologies. So you'll want to push this down because there's another tab under here. Get yourself one of these dental picks if you're going to be trying to repair some of these switches. They're really good for popping these apart. So screws are out and I'm just going to slightly pry and pop those out. I'll be right back. Now this is what the inside of it looks like. You see those three little brushes there? So those can be cleaned up. The track can be cleaned up. I'm just going to use a little bit of either isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip. Or I might get some electronics cleaner in there. But, uh, yeah, this should be pretty easy to get working better than it is. So that will not only save the 
money to buy a new one, but it will save the time waiting to get it. I decided to get some better light and my tripod set up. That video was atrocious so far, but hopefully it's helpful. It would have helped the hell out of me to get it in there. So you see here, I've got these three very delicate little brushes. All right, well, I'm back with this thing here. And I was showing earlier, let me get something to point with. This is gonna be my jumper for the clutch switch temporarily. But I was showing how this was pulling away and this is actually just sitting on there. So once the cover's in place, that should hold just fine. But I'm actually gonna put a little dot of glue in here to show here but a little dot of glue on the tab assemble it and then we'll give nice close contact before that though these I've cleaned and these little copper fingers the brushes I'm gonna bend down just a hair pick up some dielectric grease don't use Vaseline I mean if you've got nothing else and you're desperate it's better than nothing but it's a couple bucks and one tube will last you for a long time on little projects like this. And just apply a coating everywhere those brushes are gonna rub. That's what was already on there, that grease that I cleaned off. But that was all dirty from dust and crap over the years. So clean that off. And just a light coating. Now, see my contacts here are actually in really good condition. Again, they were just dirty from age. If they were worn off, what I would do is, if I was really trying to salvage this, what I would do is take electrical solder and a soldering iron and put a new layer over top. A lot of flux, keep it cool so you don't melt the board. But that's what I would have done. Just a touch on these brushes here. Watch how your spring goes. Hooks into that top slot. Sits over that. And then on this side, it'll just be going into this slot here. Pop it in like that. I'll be right back with some glue. Now, when I'm applying any sort of super glue, and like you saw with the dielectric grease there, I like using a toothpick or a little skewer like this. Just avoid getting a whole bunch in there. So put it on there just to keep it out of the way. The last thing you want to do on this is glue the whole assembly together so it doesn't turn. Then you're, you're worse than back to square one. Where's my pin? There we go. Before the glue sets up, give her a press, make sure this functions properly. There's a little hold back tab here. And all the pictures of the new ones 
show it locked back so I'm sure when you go to assemble that's how you want it and with this tab out so I'll show you as much as I can on the assembly uh, once this is back together but see it's sliding nicely another thing I'm going to do is just because you can see there's a pivot point there Put a spot of grease on there and that is partially so it pivots nicer partially so if the glue is still wet I don't glue it to the cover but let it sit for a few more minutes so simply put the cover back on clip it into place Looking screwdriver that's buried. But there's a lot of components I find on cars that people don't bother taking the time to maintain, repair. I've even had vehicles that have what they call non repairable components. And it's basically because they glue the case together instead of making it screwed together like this one. And uh, you can take one of those hot knife attachments for your soldering iron. And I've cut them open, cleaned them up, replaced parts, and yeah, they, they're like new. So this goes in here. So once that's clipped into the bracket, this will come down and clip into this tab. When I pulled mine out, I couldn't see this uh, myself. I saw it on video, but the pin was in the wrong direction. So I don't even think this thing was sitting properly. So that may have been half my trouble. I think somebody's had this out before, possibly replaced it, and did not really know what they were doing. So, everything is good on this now. It's tested nicely. So, here's the, here's the part number. I'll put that in the description. That's a very simple part to fix. So, this is how it goes in. It does need to lock open. You don't want to install it like this. You want to make sure it's clipped in like that when you're ready to install. Now we're going to have to get in there, get my arm up underneath the dash. The way I'm doing it, uh, you're working blind, so hopefully this video will help you. But you can do it without removing anything but the switch and the lower, the lower airbag. And a little bit of the trim. So I think this is probably the uh, it's the most awkward but easiest way to do it. So well, once the sun is up, I will go and climb inside and I'll attempt to take a video of installing this. But basically, when you're reaching up near the steering shaft, this is going to be a, a terrible description, I'm sure. But you're going to be reaching around like this and feel for the plug at the back. The brake switch, the plug is on the top. So you can differentiate the two like that. And this is going to be clipped down. So find that plug, press the button that's on the tab that's on this side and wiggle it off. Then get your thumb on the plug. And all you can really do is try to get your hand in here and pop this up. Once it's up, Yank it all the way out. You're not going to break it. Pull it all the way out. Put it to the side. And that should pull this piece out as well. And you're going to pull it. And then this tab is going to slide out. Unless you have the whole pedal pack out. You can't. I can't do a video of it. And with the pedal pack out. Then you don't know how to do it. I, I couldn't show you how to do it uh, this way. 
Again, this video is going to be blind. So I'm going up around the steering shaft and reaching around behind. No jokes, please. I'll video what I can, but it's not going to be much. And I'm taking that off. Make sure it's locked into the open position, not the install position. tab on this when you're installing it needs to go towards the passenger side. Also faces towards the passenger side. I just have to go by feel here. a clutch switch so I'm moving the pedal and you can see it right there so when you're installing it look up above the bracket it's difficult but you can do it and you'll be able to see the tabs to align it all right, now to put the airbag back in the cover over this, and uh, that's about it. Okay, vacuum my car too.